And now, detailing success in PNS Double Black present the Rennie Doyle Podcast, a podcast for blue-collar entrepreneurs. Hosted by the detailer of Air Force One and founder of both Detailing Success and the Detail Mafia, Rennie Doyle. Hey, we got uh, some special guests in-house, and uh, I'm going to push yep. this back just a little bit, see if it'll be easier. How's our audio? We good? Yeah, you guys are good. good. I'll, uh, okay. I'll turn it up just a little bit to make sure you're good, but you're good. Cool. Well, I'm going to go ahead and just get our mic a little closer, you know. How's that? Is that better? There we go. Thought it being like right in our face, you know, something like that. So we'll get directional. Uh, you know, I don't even want you to go there. I already know where you're going. Uh, can't take these guys anywhere, man. So, hey. No, I know. Um, we're training this week, so we've got some cool people in town. We've got some interns. We've got some guests. And we're going to talk about uh, GDA and what GDA is. And it's uh, – a geared dual action and uh, the history of that, why we, uh, why Dynabraid, these, these two guys and uh, kind of the story behind it and the benefits. And, and uh, also it's cool to hear about how tools or products are developed. A lot of people don't know the backside of it and uh, how much time it takes and how much work it takes to, um, to come out with a tool. And so this is two years in. So in the meantime, to my left, your right, okay, introduce yourself, Jim. Uh, my name is Jim Gross, and I'm the corporate trainer for Dynabraid. Right on. Right on. Out of? Uh, Clarence, New York. Cool. Yeah. Which is close to? Uh, Buffalo, New York. There you go. Yes. Cool town. <laughs> cool town. So based right out. Uh, have a training center there. Uh, do all my operations and product testing, things of that nature. So right in, right we've, in. Got a, we've got a big announcement coming here pretty soon that we're going to have a major event up at your guys' place with the uh, the Detail Mafia. Excellent. Yeah, you're at the headquarters. Sweet. Yeah, pretty All exciting. Right. Looking forward to it. Here we go. Here he is. Uh, Matthew Denny with Dynary Tools. <clears throat> going to be the tech for technical sales and application and process improvement specialist for the automotive or finish division at Dynabraid. And I am located in Southern California. Right on. And uh, you're kind of a fixture up here during training. So um, let's real quick before we have the, everybody introduce themselves. We'll have you guys make your way up here in a second. Uh, Dynabrate, how old? How long have you guys been around? Uh, we've been we, we've been manufacturing power tools for 54 years. Uh, company started in 1969 by a gentleman named Walter Walsh. Uh, he was actually a 3M abrasive salesperson. He covered the Western New York area. Wow. And uh, he did that for 14 years. Wow. So, and, uh, it, I got to meet his, some of his family. Yes. The, the daughters, I yeah. think it was. Yeah. And it was pretty, pretty special. And um, so you guys, 30% of your company is owned by? The employees. So oh, we're, we're, we're an ESOP that company. Is just cool, you know, yeah. that, I mean, for a big company like that to do that, you know, um, I mean, why, why didn't they sell out? Well, so the, you know, so when obviously we would get offers for acquisition companies that wanted to purchase us. And so we, we, we had a major company that came in, wanted to purchase. And Walter had one stipulation. If you, if I sell the company to you, you can't move it out of the Western New York area because I don't want to abandon the employees that helped me get to where I am today. Hmm. And uh, the, they couldn't agree upon that one point. And my understanding is that the company said, listen, you know, this is our last and final. We walk out the door, we become competitors. And Walter was like, well, if you can't protect my employees, then so be we're it. Be, so be it. So be it. Which, you know, when you look at challenges, um, you know, and just, just it, whether it's, you know, video problems yeah. or whatever, whatever your goal is, you know, Walter was you know I, I i can't even imagine you put your heart and soul into a company for 14 years literally that relationship helped build dynabrate and for him to make that stance and say listen you know if you're not going to protect my people then you know you can't buy my company knowing that you have all of this vet vetted time in you know knowing as soon as they walk out the door boom that relationship is going to end right and it did and, wow. you know, but well, you know, but Dynabraid were a very resilient company. 
um, you know, and we're able to adapt and pivot when we need to. Um, I think one example of that is us getting our ISO 9001 uh, certification, um, like October of last year. Mm -hmm. And what it does is it actually tells our customer base that you know, we, even though we've been in business for 54 years, we're still focused on continuous improvement. You know, absolutely. Never. Ne you don't stop more, uh, forward movement. You Never stop going. forward movement. And the reality is it, like ESOP, you know, with 30 percent ownership of the employees, we got skin in the game. Right. Absolutely. So we're not just looking to push tools out the door. We know that if we don't put a quality product out the door, it's going to hurt the company, which is ultimately going to hurt. The employee. Absolutely. So it's it's really it's a fantastic organization. It's it's pretty cool coming through your guys' headquarters. I've been there a couple times now, and you'll walk down the halls, and so like a new person is like 15 years. I mean, it's, huh. no, it, it's yeah. seriously. I, so many of the people have been there for so long. You know, the tenure is just un, un, unbelievable, and I think that shows the loyalty of the the customers. So. Um, okay, so let's get you guys back up here real quick. We got a really cool group in, and um, they're from all over the all over the country and all over the world. And so, we're yeah, gonna, man, guys, don't be bashful. Yeah. So, just one at a time. We'll start right here at the end with Blue. Blue, introduce yourself. Uh, yeah, step up, step up close, Blue. Oh, sorry. Can you see <laughs> step right up. There you go. Come He's on. Gotcha. Hi, good morning. I'm Blue Recto. I'm from Manila, Philippines. Yeah, right on, man. Philippines in the house. Next up, come on down, guys. Michael Enriquez, San Gabriel, California. Local boy, SoCal. Cool. Good morning. My name is Daryl Ponce, <clears throat> located in Sacramento. NorCal. California. NorCal. Good morning, everybody. Jerry Grant, Sellersburg, Indiana, right across from Louisville, Kentucky, and I'm with MR Detail Works. All right, on. Dom, there he is. Good morning, Dominic McLean with Mystique Detailing out of Fontana, California. SoCal in the house. Cool. Thanks, gentlemen. So, hey, cool. let's jump into this. Have some small talk. Team is two weeks away. Two weeks from right now, we'll be in the booths. Starts two weeks from yesterday. Uh, we've got our SEMA party two weeks from tonight. Uh, if you guys haven't heard about that, I think, uh, Chris, correct me if I'm wrong, right around $10,000 worth of giveaways right now, I'm guessing, somewhere right in that area. Uh, I, I would I would say at least, um, you know, it's uh, it's getting up there. I've, I've been uh, having all sorts of cool stuff trickle in all week. Wow, and so that is um, that's exciting. Uh, for those that don't know, it's a it's a benefit. We take all the proceeds, 100 percent of the proceeds, and and turn it over to SEMA Cares. Uh, there's direct links where you can donate to SEMA Cares directly. And and our mission with that is to help children, and then also to to let to let uh, SEMA know that the detailing industry is real because they really don't even. There's not even a category to check when you sign in to go attend. There is no spot for automotive detailing. And so while that's a minor thing, it, it's them recognizing us could bring a lot of cool things to the in, into our industry in the future. And so um, we just want to do cool things and um, and get some recognition and have a good time and, and come together. And the people you meet, the people you hang out with, everything about this event is is really is really special. Um, last week I had we're gonna run just through some stuff is I'm trying to escape. Uh, two or three times a month just for like a 24-hour period. And um, Carlos from Uber just bought a brand new Jeep, new to him. It's got a rooftop uh, uh, Thule tent on it. So we did a dry run last Wednesday. We we went out for 24 hours on the backcountry back here in, in Big Bear. And it was – we set up until, um, I don't know, it was 20 – I think it was 28 degrees when we went to bed. And we had a fire pit going, you know, uh, not a real fire because we're in California and you can't do real things. It's got to be, everything's got to be imitation, but um, <laughs> you know, you can fire. see, you can see that we, uh, you know, we had a nice fire going. The setting was great, but Carlos and I just sat there and talked about life until like almost midnight. And then as we got up the next morning, we decided we'd eat such a great dinner over the, we cooked it right there. cooked for Carlos and uh, the next morning we got up, we're, you know, we're wandering around and talking again and warming up by the fire. And uh, we were camped out right next to the Pacific Crest Trail. Well, that's the trail that goes from Mexico all the way to Canada. Uh, but these two individuals had done it the opposite way. They had come in from Canada to Mexico. So here they come stumbling into our camp. 
in the morning and we just started a great conversation with them. Um, we said, come over and, and, and sit. The one kid was wearing shorts. He didn't have a backpack. He had hiked. Once he got out of the Sierras, he was carrying an average of 12 pounds plus water. So he didn't, he didn't have like a heavy coat and he, he didn't have any, he got a pair of rain pants that he put over to help keep him warm inside of his bivy bag at night. And he was wonderful. He was so happy, but he did enjoy coming over by the fire pit for a while. Then we figured out they hadn't had a warm meal in two weeks that they'd be be been eating uh, tortillas and peanut butter uh, and freeze dried food. So we got the, the, all the food out. We cooked them a huge, um, a huge breakfast right there off the trail. And uh, it just proved to me that there's, there's great people all over the world. We made friends on a side of a trail on a mountain. Uh, the guy called me up. We exchanged the numbers. They were stuck. They couldn't get a, they couldn't get a ride down to their, they had, they had to go restock. And I said, Hey, if it gets in the spot, I'll take you down there. You know, it's about an hour drive. And he called me up because yeah, I'm having a hard time. I hate to do it. And I said, no, no problem, man. I'm, I'm, let me uh, finish up with the horses and I'm heading your way. And he calls me back and said, no, back, nope, got it. Got a ride. I'm all set, but thank you. So, you know, everybody says, you know, we like to see the bad that's going on in the world, but there's a lot of good. There's good all around you. It's actually easier to find good than it is bad. But we've been trained by the media and social media and, and ourselves to just look at the bad shit that's going around. And it's a really shame because every time I'm out, I just meet amazing people and strangers and it's just awesome. So um, it was, it, it, I don't know. I'm just, I'm going back out and, and I just, I've always been in the outdoors, but um, my goal now is, you know, sometimes I like the solitude to get away, but it seems like God just keeps putting like me in a position to where I meet people that I need at that time and they need me. And I, I think that's amazing. And so I think your perspective has got to change a little bit and, 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 and stop buying into that, man, really, is everything that bad? So I guess tell one of the guys that was, you know, my, 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 my trucks behind us, our overland rig, most people in the world would die to have that nice of establishment that they lived in. That's what I go out and have, and have fun in. What the hell can I, you know, <laughs> what can I complain about, man? Most people have dirt floors, you know? Um, I've got imitation marble, you know, inside my camper in a king size bed with, with a refrigerator and a heater, you know, I could I could live the rest of my life inside that and be okay and be ahead of where most of the population in the world lives is that what we have here, if you've got a, a solid roof over your head and flowing water and electricity and a, and, and, and nice flooring, you're way ahead of most of the world. But yet we want to, we want to, we want to bitch about you know what's going on. So, uh, hey, let's jump into um, let's jump into GDA a little bit. And so where forced action comes in, uh, lessons learned is 2007. I was testing it. Uh, a company I I known about them, Flex Tools, and uh, had had a rotary unit from them, but I, I didn't know what this new. 3401 gear driven tool was i was like what the hell is that and honestly when i first got my hands on it for the, about the first half an hour so different than a rotary and it was, we'd never really seen a da like it you know so um the next day i came in and and uh my buddy rod leitner um said hey man just keep using it i think this this rod's a really talented paint corrector uh sandy finished down um rod just he was impeccable it is impeccable but um, I kept with it, and then we really learned a lot of lessons taking it to Air Force One right around 2010 or 2011. And what we learned with the gear driven is we, uh, we were really excited about different DAs coming on the market as they have come on the market. But what we found is putting all the best tools of the, that we could get our hands on is if you can imagine um, aluminum on – Imagine the most delicate black paint you've ever worked on, like just sensitive, finicky. Uh, you wipe it with a towel and it re-scratches. Is take that sensitive paint times a thousand times more delicate, and that's the the aluminum on Air Force One. And and it's just and you got to remember this is this aluminum was probably built in about 1957 to 1958. Um, it is cladded aluminum. It's 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 hardcore. 
Uh, you, you take warplanes, a lot of people compare it to warplanes. Warplane aluminum is completely different. It, 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 even though it's similar eras, it, it's completely different. And we've never had such a fit of finishing, making a finish work as we have on Air Force One. Uh, especially in those days, back then, that 2008, when we were really bringing the lumen out. It's been 20 years. Those middle age years, you know, in the middle times were challenging times, but then we started getting great tools out. So then flash forward and we have, you know, amazing companies introduce amazing DAs. But what we found out was that as we were working on the, on the aluminum, anywhere that a DA, a, a, a non-gear driven tool went into a slight stall is the, the, the finish was affected on, on the aluminum. You found that out. Remember when you came? 2021. Yeah. yeah. So Matt's on it. And he comes running over and you're taking your guys' DA and, and did a test spot and said, man, I got it. I got it figured out. I'm, I'm the god of DAs. I figured this thing out. And what happened? Oh, I was, it was conveniently pointed out to me the differences in the finishes. Yeah, it was. It was and, and, and it's just getting an eye for it and yeah. being able to develop it. So we were really disappointed because – we we had we wanted another technology and we really felt that just a standard free spin DA was to be it. So what is a, a GDA? What's a geared a gear dual action? Is you take a rotary, you take a free spin DA, and they get together and you know hmm, is the results of it. The offspring of that is a gear driven tool. Correct. Is it's really close to the the action. It's got a, an off throw. Uh, of anywhere from the ones that we've tested, we're anywhere from five to, to eight uh, on the current units. Ours is sitting, we, we tested all kinds of stuff. We ended up, what was it now? We're at six, six and a half, seven. Yeah, yeah 6.8 or something like yeah. that. And so we tested all these different variations and it came down to, wow, this works really good. It cuts, it, it cuts really with ease. It takes any marks out with ease, but it's still able to finish down at that. And so, you know, we took all these other tools that are on the market and compared them and it took DA and, and even I've got one here is a lot of people say, you know, what's, is it a knockoff? Is it another company? No, is that we started our design two years ago, over two years ago. I actually took this concept and was, was working on it solo. And then by chance, um, my wife loves Oktoberfest. We have, she's a German descent. She loves to go to Oktoberfest here in Big Bear. You tell the story of, of how oh, that was great. Yeah, out. my better half, Kristen, was a uh, at Oktoberfest with me. Met your wife, and mm -hmm. they got to talking, and and, they were, and we were mentioning that we're heading to SEMA, and then she mentioned something about SEMA, and I had no idea about the detailing industry at that time. Mm -hmm. I was doing more industrial side um, process improvement. Got to talking with your wife, introduced myself, gave my name, and then from there. It kind of it didn't fall through from there. We just kind of had it that chit chat. And we just met, yep. and then I start digging into other industries, you know, for looking for future cells of where our tools could fit. And I came across the detailing industry. Then I I went online. I found you online, and I'm like, going, wait a minute, is this the same as the person I met? And then you and I met again, yeah, at an open house. Um, I went there kind of on a recon, kind of you know. Listening Listening to all the there's by the way we have mentioned there is great companies producing great tools oh, out there. Lot okay, of, yeah. So what I wanted to do is take the features and benefits of those great tools and incorporate our own tool. Absolutely. So again, we have to credit where credits due. Flex thirty four hundred one. Uh, Rupus has got the nice LH. I think change the industry. Yeah, they change, change the, the industry. industry. So we're taking the features and benefits of what they are teaching and what their their tool are and then we're listening to the crowd and that's the, the, the key is the guys are using the tool that's and it. and listening what do you like about it what don't you like about it taking all those things in consideration and trying to come up with a package so again doing the recon at that open house you and i um and kristen met there yep and then from there it just uh it morphed into the i took your class yep and then i got trained on 34 one yeah now i that's kind of the first time i came across geared action as far as electric tool was not real familiar with it i was familiar with it in our air tools with what we call the bondo hog or mud hog mm -hmm. that's used in the auto body industry for material removal uh i'm like looking going this is the same action 
as our Bondo hot bag. We already have this technology. We've had it around for 35, 40 years already. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, these guys are really on to something. And, and from there, you and I talked, and I'm, I'm thinking, okay, can I come up with a tool that is what everybody's looking for, the best of the best, and then put it into a tool that you and I can come up with? Uh, we had all these tools out. We we dissected. We looked at things. We we worked together, and we came up with something. We believe that the detailers. I mean, it, this was really designed by the detailers. Absolutely. I mean, that's the best testing. Way it. It was everything testing, else. Everything. We brought people in. We still we introduced did a soft introduction at Air Force One. Got it in their hands. We're still getting feedback. We're we're going through. You guys are see testing go down tomorrow. So we're going to take and do it a whole nother level. And and it will never. This is gonna. This tool is gonna evolve. It's just serious for Absolutely. a reason. So, so now, um, they we we um, warthog. It's called the warthog. It goes in with mudhog. Mudhog. That you guys got. But really, where it comes back from is is the first tool that your founder ever developed was for the aviation industry. Correct. He, it was. Uh, it he did. Yes, it was one of the two major companies. Companies that we were dealing with, right? Yeah, the aviation side, um, and also yeah. for, the, for the turbine blades. For the turbine blades, yeah. So yeah. the jet engines got turbine blades. Uh, basically, it's like it looks like a fan, right? And there's a process of uh, sanding those. There was a lot of hand sanding going on, and he found a a, a tool that could actually utilize a belt, fit in basically there. a file in, in rotating a belt. So basically, it became from Dyna Braid name came became the Dyna file, and that's what started the company. Wow. Was that? So so then as a kid, I started out cleaning airplanes. Huh. So we decided, Matt and I were talking, and then we had, it just kept growing. <laughs> so so Chris and I, we were flying all over the place, and, and I looked at Chris one day, I looked at Diane, and I said, you know, what the hell am I doing designing a tool by myself? Mm. This is going to be a huge undertaking. The financial side of it is massive, but I don't have the engineer strength. I've got the tool. I mean, I I pretty much came to you guys and said, look, and, and Dynabrave was awesome, man. I mean, we, we've got, got the original clay molds. We've got, I mean, it, it just kept evolving. You know, it just kept evolving. And so then we started calling all the engineers, Skunk Works, you know, and if you guys are in there, you know, Skunk Works is, is the side of, of Lockheed Martin that does all the big secret airplanes, you know. Uh, and so we just we were just nerding out on stuff. And then we decided that the Warthog, you know, the A-10 Warthog, the airplane, I mean, it's basically, you know, it's a it's an airplane built around a gun, and so we built a we built a polisher around ability. Right, was kind of what we were saying is that we're going to take it and change things up and make it lighter, low profile, longer. You've got, you know, you both guys are both super tall, right? But I'm not tall. I don't have, you know, larger hands like you guys do. But I like to drop my hand back and get different leverage points as I'm, as I'm working paint. And so we elongated the handle. Then we, then we sat there and we went, man, it could be even longer. So then the engineers wanted to kill us because we're all going, hey, can we just get like another inch? You know, we need another finger grip on the back. <laughs> and it's like, you know, starting back over again. And so it, it, it's just that chance meeting with you and my, you know, you're, you're all, all coming together. It's, was it by chance? Yeah. You know, was it by chance? So some of the key benefits of this thing, and then we're going to get it, bring Jim into this, is that it's one machine. And so we really, what we've loved about, about a, a, a GDA technology is that if you take the time to learn it, most people just, they're, they're so used to either doing rotary or DEA that this thing throws them off. And the other options spun the different direction. There's some, there's some characteristics that got hot. So we've worked on those things. Um, is it's one machine that we can cut aggressive. You guys are going to be cutting 800 grit sandy marks today. Nice. You know, with this machine. Now we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna take and and and, and teach you how to. You, know, you don't have to cut those those 800 grits out, but we can take 800 grit sandy marks out with this machine. We can polish with this machine. We can do a one step with this machine. And we can go all the way down to a finish grade jeweling step if you want to on on real sensitive paint. Uh, and so now we come into oh, one, one more thing. Okay. okay. And this is one thing that really surprised us at Air Force One. 
you can even use this tool one hand. Yeah, one handed. One handed. It's really balanced. It's got a real low center of gravity. And 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 listen, we're going to tell you right now, as Matt already did, did it. We, you're you're probably never going to come into a training with any other manufacturer in my shop to where they're going to hand you every tool and tell you to pick out the one you like the best. We're that confident. Not everybody's going to dig it. What we want the people to do to 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 fall in love with it, like we have. Um, we we give credit to the other companies. There's been a, a lot of companies that have changed the game. We're going to change the game. But it's like Ferrari, Ferrari and, and Lamborghini. Uh, you never want those two companies to stop developing stuff because one will come up or McLaren will come up with something and then Ferrari's got to beat it. Right. And so that's our approach to this is we, you know, we hope, we know the, I mean, even just like a, on the butt end of the saying, if you're listening to you, we'll see it, but it's got a swivel cord, you know, just simple little tasks like that, that the engineers came up with that are game changers in it. And the other thing, too, is there's a lot of high respect Dynabrid has for the other tool companies that are out there that have dealt well with this. And we want that friendly competition out there. And we want to support the industry as well. We want them to, if they see something, they want to prove something. We want to keep on our eye on what they're improving so we can improve ourselves. If it's the constant battle is improving the process. Yes. You, Correct. Everybody that is the end user is the winner. So, yeah. so this is where Jim comes in, shorter learning curve. So we're taking aim not just at detailing, but the auto body sector. You know, is looking at the auto body industry, um, looking at the dealership industry, is that this tool has got the capability of a rotary, yet it's not quite as – the learning curve is far less. And it's not quite as um, challenging, and it's not, it's, it's, it's not going to um, – it's, it's not going to screw the paint up. I mean, it's right now with OEM paints doing what they're doing. And you guys have got really good relationships with those OEM manufacturers. Even, I mean, all the way to the, for the guns, the paint, all that. So talking to them, this is a trend that's not going to change, is that OEM paints are going to – they're going down this way, and they're not going to come back. It's not going to reverse back on us. Right. And so you've got a tool that is going to be able to allow you to correct but not put the dangers – of rotary onto a OEM paint that's super thin. My wife got a new, I've shared this many times, she just got a new uh, new car this last year and measuring it, we're going to measure it today. You guys are going to see this firsthand is that back in the day, if we had under four and a half or five uh, mils of total paint system, we were shocked. And if it got down under, if it got in the three mark, we were like, like, oh my God! We're seeing you... we're seeing two now. Oh yeah, now you'll, you're going to see twos on my wife's car, hmm. brand new. Uh, go down through the Porsche lineup. You're going to see twos in, in Porsche. Um, Mercedes Benz is changing their paints uh, as as early as next year, and so we're, we're going to see that's a trend because I'm sure it's saving them money. It comes down to money, you know. And another thing you and I talked about, especially with doing a lot the research of the the detailing side of it is then myself come from the automotive refinishing division i was starting to see why is the least experienced lowest paid guy touching that car before it goes to the customer absolutely why not make that guy qualified like the detailing industry is to be professional finish so he can bring out a, a beautiful car to the customer it's a win-win for the actual dealership in or body shop that's working on it. Absolutely. And so we, we see it as an education process. You know, we're going to start uh, hosting events all over the country, all over the world um, with the tool and tools. And, and we're going to take, and we really want to take and share of, of, of an oath. Just like if you go to medical school or if you become an EMT or a paramedic is you take an oath and it's do no harm. Is that, we, as at, especially now with OEM paints going the direction they are, and even repaints going the direction they are, is we have, we, we should be taking that same oath to do no harm. But we, we feel really comfortable is kind of braid is combined with the technology that we've done with this new tool and amazing products that are out there, is that now it's education. Is there's a lot of great companies out there. Rupus has got a great education program. 
Uh, I've gone all over the world with Flex, and but we're going to just take this to the next level and be another resource for the industry to come in and learn from. Uh, it's not, and we don't see it as competition. We see it as collaboration. Is we see it as a way for manufacturers to better a whole industry and make things more efficient. Because we don't stand up to those challenges, it is that we're going to get behind those challenges, and we're not going to be successful as as an industry, both as detailing and in the, in, in the auto body world. Um, the whole the whole thing with certified used cars has changed the game too, because like my buddy owns a body shop not too far from here. Uh, he is a uh, authorized Subaru. Uh, body shop and so for Subaru to put their stamp on hey this car when the repairs are done no longer does just the insurance company own they they, they don't say anymore what needs to be done because the manufacturers have come in and said wait a minute you know this is a Subaru we've got all these safety features in here this has to be done or you're buying the liability and the insurance companies are like oh shit you know what do we do so that's kind of helped us you know, and, and we can't, we're not the industry we were before. We're, we're growing. But if you look at this machine in, in, in a single step correction, is that it can do those things that ease of maintenance. When you pull this thing apart, oh, you, yeah. I mean, the change to change the, the, uh, the cord. I, I've never seen a cord, a cord assembly come out and go back in as fast as I've seen this one. It, it's unreal. Then everything else is to get to, uh, and, and change all the brushes is is it's just it's literally um, pull a screen off, change them out, put them back in. All the different things too with inside when you want to take and if you have to take and change out the, the trigger mechanism. Yeah. Everything's made been engineered to be easier, and that, that's a big change in the industry. Um, cooler is a big part of it. Oh yeah, you know, I think so on that. Is that it's running cooler, but I think the key to take away from this is is that you've got a machine that will do multiple tasks and the learning curve of getting used to it is lower. Now, we decided to always test the machine because a lot of detailers are five inch. I'm a five inch pad eye. Everything I put on, my, on, on the machine is five inch. But the body shop likes the, the bigger size. They like the eight inch, for, yeah. especially from the rotary. So for them to go to a five inch is such a big difference. So that's where that six inch comes in, into play. Yeah, they, they figured that when they look at the pad and how they're using an eight inch pad, realistically, they're really only using about six and a half inches of that pad when they're using a rotary. Absolutely. It, I mean, the, the other is dry and usually it's putting marks into the paint. Hmm. Yep. So, and, and especially with the technologies of the compound, the compound companies out there are doing a fantastic job of now producing no fillers, buy shops, safe compounds that are actually giving you a true finish, not a hidden finish you know right. saying, not hmm. hidden scratches you remove the scratches and you got a you know an absolutely fantastic finish with that in mind that makes adjustments for those um, guys that were using a row raise now they can't hide those scratches so it's coming back to buy them so that that's when we i start seeing two tools at shops i'd see a rotary for the cutting and then a guy would have a random war or da mm -hmm. um for his finishing and i'm sitting there going okay we could do this all with one tool. Let's simplify this, okay? And that's where, again, going with the gear driven or the that action from a gear dual action gives you the cut of the rotary so it satisfies that cut rate for the uh, polisher to get that, that part out, but also gives them that final finish that he's looking for with the one tool. Yeah, yeah and, and the one thing about DynaBraid is when we're designing a tool, I mean, obviously, you know, with Matt and, and Randy, you guys had a lot of input about the overall design. But we've always been a processed focus company. We never wanted to come out with a tool that, hey, this is our tool, buy it, enjoy it. Yeah. We're looking at the whole spectrum and you know, how is the operator using it? You, know, you, you kind of brought it up with the, you know, with the swivel, this, the swivel on here. How are you going to maintain this tool over mm -hmm. time? You know, one handed, I, I was actually surprised you know, and, and pleasantly happy to hear about one applications because now trucks are getting taller they're getting bigger your stance are still the same and now if you can hold it out and actually control well, it if you think that's a challenge for you <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. but we, we we actually when you think about it and you brought about this about the series you know we will we'll sit there we, we we have we have a real fantastic you know product development team at dynamo 
grade. And we're looking at every single scenario. We're just kind of, you know, scattershotting everything down. What is the end user going to do? But then we also think about their environment. You know, uh, you know, what are they doing with it when they're done? You know, do you want to do you want to lay the tool, you know, on the side, or do you want to lay it on this little support? Well, it's yeah. not so simple as, as again, is to Jim's point. This sits like this on the table. The handle has an arc enough to where you can reach underneath it, and it's it's real stable. And so we put stabilizations at a couple different points. But you can see this is this big pad right there where my fingertip is. Is that spreads out? This thing's really hard to tip. It's a nice kickstand. Yep. Yeah, it's yeah, it's a kickstand. Yeah. yeah. And, and the funny thing was the reason why we came up with this is it, social media. We were watching little clips people were putting out with different manufacturers types of tools. They put it on as a resting spot, Sheesh. and then it would tip over. Yeah. And they would do these little videos like they put it here, and then they go do something, come back, and it's tipped over again. So how can we? you know fix that make it better so it doesn't happen to us right right and it's even a handle so you know we came up we've designed a d handle that come over this but the size of this handle how many different variations did we go through just on different size people you know and the ergonomics of it and how does it feel do you want it to turn up do you want it to turn down all these different things and you know it comes down to a, you're never going to make everybody happy because there's so many variations of grips and challenges and ages. And, and you know, as a person gets my grips changed as I've aged, you know, is that. And then also, I don't like to work hard. Is that I call myself a lazy detailer is I don't want to have to put muscle into it. I want them. That's why I've got a machine. Mm -hmm. I want the machine to be the muscle and me to be the, the finesse. I want to literally be able to hold the machine, reach over, sip my latte and go back to work, you know. And, and, the, and the machine really loved it. Look at this. The Chris has got uh, up there a picture right now. That's the 3D print. Yeah, that's the 3D print right there uh, of the earliest days. And you see some, some similarities to it. Um, it, it, it. It came out pretty close to that, you know, really close to that. And, and um, you can see the way it sits on uh, the surface. It's got an elevated handle. It's easy to reach. And it's really, really stable is that it, it just doesn't it just doesn't go anywhere. You know what's really nice about this this tool? It doesn't discriminate on which compound you use. Mm -hmm. It doesn't discriminate which mm -hmm. pad you use. Whatever you're comfortable with, what pad manufacturer you use or what compound you, you love, it will work for you. It will. So we don't hold you. Yes, will we have a system? Yeah, we'll have a system that will go with it. But our system will work. So will yours. Go with whatever you're comfortable with. Yeah. The tool will perform for you. Yeah. It, I got to show this real quick. So a couple things. I've got another one I'm going to bring in that a special person gave to me. It's in my house. Um, Michael gave this to me yesterday. So there's boom. I mean, that's pretty special. But I really, I won't let you guys read that because it's special between him and me. Uh, but a no note on it. But I want to thank that. And then Anthony Carrera, when he was here, he knew this thing was coming out. And he knew that we'd been putting a lot of work to it. He saw Air Force One. And he had a little pennant made. Uh, that looks like the machine. Uh, this, he's got a silversmith friend. They made that. And so and, yeah, I, I keep it by me. Um, it, uh, but that's the meaning of behind this tool. We're, I, I mean, we're here. We're all here to make money. I mean, you got to make a living, right? Is that Dynabrade's, you know, 30% of the company's owned by their employees. Your companies are 100% owned by you I mean, or your family. You know, your investment is your future. You know, it's your past. It's everything wrapped into one. But, you know, I've gotten in a position in my life to where it is the tools so much more than money. Honestly, right now, all the work that's gone into it, um, I was just talking to one of my mentors uh, early this morning. And he goes, so are, are you missing the design side of it? Because it was almost a daily thing. We had so many meetings, I can't tell you. And I said, yeah. I mean, the tool coming out, I'm excited about. I'm really excited about that, but I like the design and I want to see it change people's income levels. Is that I want to see it be able to get into the hands of do it yourselfers that can now do better work. I want to see families change from it. Um, I want to see uh, people be able to spend more time at home doing what they love, love. Is because detailing doesn't define me, it's what I do for a living. And I know a lot of people. People will boohoo that, 
I love what I do, or I wouldn't be here. I mean, I've, I've been doing it longer than most, most of you've been alive. You know, I did if I hated or anything else, I didn't say that. But life is short, and there's a lot of different flavors of ice cream, and detailing is just one flavor of ice cream. I, I, I like to go out and taste, and I I want that to get. I want to get that. I want to get that message out to the detailers. This tool is not just a tool; it it's a lifestyle. It's and it's a lifestyle change, and it's a it's a change in the way that you your profitability shows up. And other people are going to respond to this. I guarantee you, there's tool manufacturers that are listening to this right now, and they're going to respond. Good, good, because we're going to respond again too. Yeah, we all want to better ourselves. Good, we're going to keep yeah. responding. And it's not about who's better; it's about bringing us all better. Yeah. And then you as as as, as the, the consumer choosing, you know what you. What what you want to go with and what works for you. Well, the good thing is your designing still gets to play because this is not over. Over. Yeah, I never. Mean, yeah, exactly. Never. Yeah. So we're it's never over. over. No, it's, it's never, never over. over. But, but it was funny yeah. because is that it's time to go sell it, right? Mm -hmm. It is time to go, go get the, the tool on the market. You know, it's going to start here in just weeks. But in the same, same token, it's, it's like, it's almost hard to believe. You know, now it's time to go. For me, I don't look at it as, okay, sell, sell, sell. It's change, change, change. Get this into the hands of the right people that it can take and 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 put a real positive twist to their business and therefore their life. Because is what we do is when you're you're self-employed is that that is entangled into your life. It is part of the. It's, again, it's part of the selection of ice cream you've got every day. And so I, I call it the three sectors. And so you've got 20, 24 hours, eight, 16, 24, three sectors, right? I really believe that eight hours is enough. Eight hours of work is enough. Eight hours of sleep is pretty much mandatory. You can say, I don't need that much. Yeah, you do. Even the military, even the SOD guys, the Special Forces guys, pilots, all of them, they're realizing it. You know, there's a reason why they put yeah. you through training of sleep de yeah. deprivation. And now that they say, hey, if you're going in the field, you need to sleep, man. Mm -hmm. Is they're realizing that the human body needs that sleep. So there's there's eight hours of work, eight hours sleep. What? There's a whole other eight hours. What are you doing with that? Yeah. What are you doing with that? That's what I want this tool to do is you fill in the blanks on what you're doing with that other eight hours. There's where I'm at. Yeah. Nice. It's easy for us to sit there and I'll tell you that we want to sell you a tool. But really what we want to do is sell you the lifestyle that betters your life. And we all have fun. You're going to come to the booth at, you know, it's, 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 I'll be at PNS. I'll be at Dynabraid. I'll be at PNS. I'll be at Dynabraid. I'm going back all day long. We're going to have fun at the booth, and you're going to see we got a lot of cool giveaways. You're going to want to stop by the booth for sure. Um, and we're just going to have fun with this tool. It's a fun tool to use, and uh, we're excited to get it into your hands. So, you guys, hey, Chris, any questions pop up? And do, Jim, do you have anything to add to that? Because I mean, you're a trainer. You're going to go out and work. How many people are you going to train on this thing? Um, I will probably train hundreds of people on this it, at least for the process you know but I, I i will say that you know thinking yeah i'm shocked by a couple of things one that there's no detailing section at sema mm -hmm. that kind of blows my mind there is but yeah. it's yeah yeah it's like, yeah I mean, they kind of group but, us together now which is nice because they used to just a couple years ago they didn't even do that but they don't recognize us really no i i will i, I will tell you that so being I'm I'm the corporate trainer. I'm more on the industrial side of our tool lines, mm -hmm. but I was ignorant to this whole industry. Um, you know, to me, detailing a car was going to a box store, getting a thing of turtle wax, swirling it on your vehicle, and then polishing it off. And then I went to MTE um, last last year mm -hmm. or first part of this year, and Matt was there, and I saw this whole detailing in industry. And, uh, you know, the passion of, of, of what you guys do, you detailers do every single day. And, and, and you know, this is your life path. And, and I, was, uh, I was actually pretty amazed that this whole subculture existed. And I was just like, wow, you know, this is one of the few I ideas that you have that you can actually start your own business and better yourself and better your family, you know, in, in, in an in industry that's easy to understand, has processes already pre-established, products out there. And to me, 
I'm real proud for Dynabraid to actually now have a tool specifically designed for the industry. It's pretty awesome. So that now that we can even enhance what the detailers are doing. So let's go back because we talked about this. Dynabraid had an attachment that went on a rotary. Yep. Okay. Yep. That turned it into a DA. Yep. And that thing was a, a it was a work of art. I mean, it yep. was designed. It looked it looked like yep. you know aerospace, right? I mean, it. it was Bill pretty, Lumen. Yeah, Bill, it was unreal. We used that back in the day when there was no DA. We have well, it, it, Joe Montalbano. He's our orbital manager. If you're out there, we're, we're talking to you, buddy. Yeah. Because he because we we're, there there's a lot of people at Dynabraid that have purchased those that yeah. are using those for their own personal vehicles. Yeah. And I think it was a it was a monster, but it was a Sputnik. Oh, it was yeah. so before its time. <laughs> it was so before and, its time. And and and, and yeah. so that was my first introduction, and then and then SDA started coming in and really changing. But you know, really high tech, what I call high tech DAs, is still. Pretty pretty new to us i mean it's only a decade for 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 the detailing industry is is really rupes came in and changed the game and 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 put that technology on the map and changed the industry mm -hmm. and so you know here's another um seasoned company coming into this seeing opportunity to put our own mark on it and uh it's fun well so, and the thing is too is and keep in mind too, too, that if you see, I, I've heard them called uh, band sanders or, or you know belt tools. Mm -hmm. That entire market didn't exist prior to 1969. So if you see a belt driven tool, yeah, you know uh, that is a cousin of the Dynafile. Wow, you know that multi head attachment that yep. you were just referring to. Yeah. We've had that technology for thirty some, 50, probably fifty years. Wow, we've had that. Wow, you know, just kicking around. So this is just kind of. Uh, a good focus. Yeah, it, it basically you're taking the experience of Dynabraid's employees, you know, outside sales reps, and they're very technically um, looking for how they can improve. Hold on, I got I got a friend coming up. You say hi, <laughs> hi, hi. Yeah, hello, hello. Yeah, so he's a little shy. Yeah, I gotta tell you. Yeah, okay. He's looking for food. I think. Oh, yeah. you just want loves. Yeah. So those that are listening is that we've got Matt's dog here, and he just came up to me and. Wants to have some love. You want to get on camera? You're going to knock the whole table down. You're pretty big, dude. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. But basically, we're always looking to take that experience from our field sales reps and how they can go and do, again, a process improvement. And always thinking outside the box. Okay, if I had an experience at this place, how can it apply to my next customer? Absolutely. And that was kind of how you and I got uh, started like, for Air Force One. I had a lot of metalworking background yeah. and you're like, okay, what can you do with this aluminum? What, what do you have? And like last year we came out with a, a nice system that really enhanced our finish. Well, we've been wanting to do the leading edges on air force one for 20 years. I want, I did a test spot the first year there and asked him, man, I really, cause that's what I was into back then and was leading edges of jets. Right? right. And I did a lot of it and um, they just kept, it wasn't a priority and, and it was really tough. They were really beat up. And Matt came up with a system and process with the tool. And, man, it's, I won't say it's made easy work of it, but it's made it a lot more efficient, and it, it quality is a lot better. And then the mm -hmm. same thing is we go over in the Concorde jet. Well, they wanted to get all the, the machine finishing back to the factory machine finishing on those on, on those thrusters. On the titanium. Yeah, on the titanium. And, man, that, again, not an easy job. <laughs> but you came up with a system with tools uh, that allowed us mm -hmm. so much so – that when air the, the people that are making the new uh, supersonic uh, 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 jet that's going to come out and replace the Concorde, they came out. I don't even know if you know this. They came out, and I had to send them all the data on what we were doing to that Concorde because they want to do it on the thrusters on theirs, and which is also titanium. Right. So now I'm going to piggyback on that for a second, though, Matt. How long how long have you been in the industry, including with Dyna Braid, your metalworking background total. Uh, I'm going on my 20th year. 20th year. Randy, how long have you been in the detailing industry? 40 years. 40 years. 60. I've been with Dyna Braid assembling tools, selling power tools for, for 10 years. So this is three people, mm -hmm. two companies, one partnership, over 70 years of experience, just sitting right here in one industry. Right. Just sitting at the table. You know? And that doesn't even... And, and with... 
us being employee owned, our, our, our engineering staff probably has 100, 120 years of Easy. design and manufacturing of tools. So that's a pretty powerful force. It is. It is out there. And you know, the main thing is we want to just make an impact on your life. Make an impact on your life. Make it better. Make, make it make, shine. Make it, make, there you go. Make, make your easier. life. Make that eight hours make easier. Make your eight hours shine. There you go. Well, I think, hey, Chris, unless there's anything else, man, I think we got it covered. And uh, well, um, I have only one question. Okay. And it's not a very serious one, but Jason Bruno wants to know where where uh, where his buddy Jerry is. Jerry's right here. Yeah, he's right here. Come here. I think I think I think Jason I think Jason and and Jerry have this little man crush thing going yeah, on. Yeah, would you please yeah, blow, blow, blow him a kiss? There you go. Okay, we got it done. Yeah, geez, oh mighty. <laughs> He's army. So, oh, yeah. Man. Okay. You know, so there you go. Hey, I actually, yeah. um, I actually do want to do a, a little housekeeping in regard in regards to the tool. Um, you know, we're we're actually uh, giving one of these away, and uh, let me uh, let me clear the captions here. Anyway, so we're giving one of these away, and uh, all you guys got to do to enter to win is. Uh, Go find the post on our social media. It explains all the details, but essentially make a donation to SEMA Cares and send proof of that donation to me, and you are entered to win one of these things. So it'd be a very go. cool way to get your hands on one and make an awesome difference in the lives of all the children that the SEMA Cares charities support. So, well, you know, I think there's an easy way to go about that. I'll talk to you off screen. And, and one little note, too, if you see on this image, is the backing plate is orange. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this one's white. You've got to remember this is the these were all test units, you know, that we've we've been playing with. So we got some real interesting stuff coming out for backing plates and everything else. But great, uh, 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 great point. Uh, enter this. Go in. It's SEMA Cares. Um, it's a five hundred one C. If you donate straight to them, it's a complete complete write off. It's they're a charitable, yep. they're a charitable company, and uh, we're not. We're not touching those funds. 100% of this goes to uh, SEMA Cares, and they've got – I can't remember what percentage, but it's like 90% 90, 90 of their donations go to the, the uh, charitable uh, organizations and not their staff. Uh, they've got a really small staff. They've got a high payout for their charities. Uh, we're, really, we're really fortunate to be uh, backing them up and, and uh, making some, some life uh, impacts. So. Yep. And and the the way we got it set up is every every twenty five dollars you donate gets you one entry into uh, the contest to win this guy. Right on. Now, yeah, I think that we just got something too. Is I think we just had somebody else jump into that that wants to throw some of their weight around. So we'll we'll uh, we'll take and be um, announcing that later. But there's some some a lot of manufacturers in this industry are stepping up and they want to see this donation uh, total go through the roof. And so we'll, uh, we'll be coming out to you, watch social media, but other than that, Chris, we'll see you up here tomorrow. And then uh, Oscar, we'll see you up here. I think he's coming up tomorrow too. And yep. uh, other than that, we're going to go put these guys to work. Yes. Yeah. Go, go get to work, get some training done and uh, you know, make sure there's not as much for me to do when I get there. Oh yeah. There's going to be plenty. It's going to be plenty. Yeah. Yeah, you know the dog's going to the bathroom in certain spots, so we need somebody to clean it up. We saved, oh, we saved no. the whole. Program. Yeah, there you go. All right, I'm guys. Sorry, hey, that's, take... that's, that's Matt's job. Yeah. <laughs> take take care, everybody. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Rennie Doyle podcast, brought to you by Detailing Success and PNS Double Black. Listen to new episodes weekly, and be sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your favorite podcasts. And don't forget to share with your friends and colleagues.